driver. Welcome to the Layman Seminary. Today we're going to be continuing our, our uh, dispensation series, and we have Dane and Josh in South Korea. Um, Y'all seen them probably from other videos, and Janet with her changing background and wondering why Dane or Josh didn't say anything about it, but now y'all probably can't keep your eyes off of it because it keeps on changing. So, all right, let me sh let me uh, share my screen. Okay. And who wants to pray us in? Okay, go ahead. I was coming before you throwing a grace. You just. How you in our lives, it would uh, just life would be difficult. We thank you for the blessings that you have provided, and just ask that you be with us during this time uh, of, of study as we understand um, more of an approach of how to better understand your written word um, that we may get to know you better and, and, and improve our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, let me just remind y'all of like the general flow. Um, Janet answers first, okay? Mm -hmm. Then Dane and then Josh. That's the general flow. Now, I know y'all are going to be, you know, uh, buttoning in and, and talking or whatever, but that's the general flow, all right? And if, and if Dane has a question, we want Janet to try to answer it. And the reason being is because Josh, you're in seminary, Dane's in seminary, but Janet, she, she's not in seminary. So we got to make it fair to her, right? But she also probably watches, you know, stuff all the time and everything. So, um, okay. So here's the first question as we continue talking about how many dispensations there are. Is the tribulation a dispensation? Janet, yes or no? Um, yes, for me, tri yeah, tribulation is a dispensation because that's the, uh, that's the other uh, story when, when the church ruptured. So, okay, that's another tribulation. So you're saying because the church has been removed, that signifies that a new dispensation is occurring. Yes. Okay. Sir. Dane, what about you? <laughs> Um, I've not been taught that it is a dispensation of its own. Um, I, my understanding of it is that it is either part of the dispensation prior to the church being finished, or that it is, uh, well, at least not part of the church dispensation because there are rules set up to govern it in the same way that there was other dispensations. Okay. Josh? I'm going to agree it's not a separate dispensation because um, it's God dealing with the earth slightly differently. I mean, he's, he's judging. Um, I mean, everything's under judgment, but there's still the, you know, he's not revealing new information because um, he's already revealed it through John in, uh, in Revelation, right? Um, so salvation, obviously, doesn't change throughout dispensations, but um, he's finishing up before the new the, the new dispensation of the the economy of the kingdom. Um, so I would agree with uh, what was said that it's not a separate dispensation. It's just a, we're just continuing. We're fit, we're wrapping up the current dispensation. Room. Okay. There. The, um, so let me just review. Janet says it is uh, because the church has been removed. So something's different going on. Dane says, no, it's the, the closing of grace, basically, or the, uh, or yeah, the grace probably is what he said. And then Josh, you're basically saying there's no additional revelation because it was all already revealed to John about it. So it's not new information. And so that was one of the reasons you say it's not a dispensation, right? Separate, yeah. Okay. 
Um, where do you get that idea that there has to be new revelation for there to be a new dispensation? How God has continually started all new dispensations, right? So um, the, when he gave um, when he gave a promise to Adam and Eve about, you know, I think you want to say that there's seven dispensations, right? Um, you know, we got, I'm going to basically preserve the seed, right? Eventually a seed is going to come along the line. And then same thing with Abraham, same thing with Moses and Israel, same thing um, at when Jesus showed up. And then there was always, uh, there's a pretty significant shift um, and what was going on than previous times. Okay. Um, and I don't see a, I mean, yes, there's a shift, but it's, it's the, like I said before, it's the culmination of what God has already said. Um, I mean, yes, the church is removed, but the written word is still here. There's, he's not, he's not, you know, no, um, Prophets aren't revealing more information here. You know, he's not laying well, a foundation. You're, for you're talking about right now or in the tribulation? I mean, in the tribulation, right? So, yeah. So, so you're saying there's not so, prophets in the tribulation? No, I didn't say that. I said okay. that they're not revealing. <laughs> they're, not that they're not revealing? revealing. <laughs> they're not revealing new what? Information. They're not revealing new information. But they, they are. But calling, are they? They are calling. They are calling Israel to repent if you're talking about the two prophets at the wind wall, uh -huh. right? Um, Isn't it during tribulation there's a prophet there, the two prophets that seems yeah. like Moses and Isaiah? Correct. Well, Moses Correct. and Elijah or Moses. Oh, Elijah doesn't say, saying, sorry. Yeah, it doesn't say. But there's a difference in saying, okay, here's something new versus y'all need to look back, you know, X amount of years ago because we don't know when the end times will occur. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ is the way, right? So they're they're calling the nation to repent. The scripture is saying repent, you know. Um, but the kingdom is being offered at that time, right? During the tribulation. No. no. Why do you say no? Because um, they. Well, hold on. They, go ahead. Um, I, because they still have to go through their judgment. I mean, right, Israel right. But the kingdom is still being offered. But you're saying it can't be rejected? Is that what you, why you're saying it's not really offered? If it's being offered, I mean, I don't think it could be rejected. Well, okay, yeah. And Janet mentioned this the other day, too. Um, maybe, maybe we need a better word besides offered. But the point is, is that the kingdom uh, is available in seven years, you know, from the beginning of the tribulation. Christ is coming back to set up his kingdom, and that's going to happen. Um, Correct. It's more like an ultimatum, <laughs> you know. But yes, but at the same time, he's already said that's it's after not tribulation, it. right? When I mean, Jesus come and said, "Yes." All right. So there's prophets, and they, I believe, they are going to be given new revelation during the tribulation. All prophets always point back to prior revelation, but I believe they're going to give a new revelation. I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but I but, look at it. Go ahead, Janet. But the prophets there in revelation, allowing them to do everything that they wanted to do. So where is that? Where is the, you know, the, the essence of being like have a, a motion or notion to become like, uh, for example. The port A and going to the port B, while uh, with uh, another dispensation. If well, the I, I, is I'm the dispensation. I'm not. I'm not even weighing in yet. All I'm saying oh. is that Josh's objection is there's not additional revelation. Now there's not additional written revelation, but you also have oral prophets, right? And that they're going to be speaking during that time, those two witnesses. So I would say there is revelation in that sense. I don't know the exact content of that revelation. I don't know if we could read 
revelation and find some of that or if it just mentions what they're the miracles they do and all of that but mm -hmm. um okay i i i'm willing to take that into consideration so right. janet says it's yes it's a new dispensation dane says no and josh says no janet do you want to change your answer no all right good mm. all right thank you so, sir so Rari, I'm not saying you're right. I'm just saying good, good for, good for knowing yeah. what you believe at least right now at this moment. Okay. So Rari says there there's three possibilities. Okay. Here they are. Is the tribulation part of the Mosaic Law? Is it part of the dispensation of grace, or is it a dispensation in itself? So Janet, which one is it? Um. My uh my my answer is uh the the three one the a dispensation in itself. She don't want to change her answer. Okay, all right. <laughs> Go ahead, Dane. What about you? I'm actually going with the Mosaic Law because it's dealing with the Jews again. Okay. Oh, makes sense. It makes sense. But did the law end? Remember the last video? Well, not the last last video, but the one we did. Yeah, um, that, that about the easy. end of the law. When did the law end? Yeah, I guess I was looking at that from an earthly perspective then, because the Jews mm. will pick up the sacrifice again, but they don't need to. So, right, and and there are dispensations that uh, are you know you got ones that are more directed towards the Gentiles, and mm -hmm. you got others that are more directed to the Jews and stuff. So I'm more Israel. So I think the way you're thinking is, is right, but ask yourself what covenant is an operation because mm -hmm. mentioning the people group That's great. is not yeah. narrow enough. Right. What, Janet? No, I think uh, I said that uh, the Messiah law is ended already, right? So we are on, in grace. So why then if uh, the tr during that time is uh, part, that, the, uh, part of Messiah law? Mm -hmm. uh which is the mosaic law is ended already okay so i i may prefer if i'm going to things um but i may be um, for me i maybe go to grace than mosaic law okay so janet's yeah. willing janet's willing to go from saying it's not a dispensation she's more willing to go to grace than she is the mosaic law all right yeah i, th I think with that those comments, I think I would be leaning more towards grace as well. And um, Charles, a thought popped into my head and I'm wondering if you could speak to it a bit. Uh, similarly to in Noah's age, mm -hmm. uh, once the wrath began of the flood, mm -hmm. um, the flood itself that lasted uh, about a year, year and a half, that wasn't its own dispensation either. That was the wrapping up of right. his dispensation yes i agree and i think rari even uses that in part of his argument mm. for why uh the tribulation is not a dispensation josh yeah i i think it's part of the dispensation of grace if okay. that's what you want and we're assuming yeah. that the dispensation of grace actually exists you know mm. And uh, yeah. there are some people saying, no, it doesn't exist, that it's just the church age and there's a transitional time, but okay. So you're referring to church church age or you're referring to the tribulation itself? What did you say? Well, if, if, you, if we're assuming that grace exists, okay? You have In the, the church inside of it the, and you have the tribulation it, inside of it. Let me draw a picture, okay? Pin. All right. So here's the cross, right? The church mm -hmm. will be here. Okay. Here's the rapture. And here's the tribulation. This is fire coming down or something. All right. If the if the law ended at the cross, then this time to here, past the fire would all be grace. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All that would be grace. Yeah. So so the church and the tribulation would be in grace but if the but if grace if grace the 50 days or yeah 50 50 days in between the cross and pentecost is not a dispensation and it's a transitional period uh then 
uh, then you would have the church age and then you would have the tribulation, you know? So those are just decisions you got to make, you know, but interesting. What about the idea? I mean, uh, Dane just brought up the example of, of Noah whenever he's on the ark. So even though the deliverance occurred, right? It wasn't until they were on safe land that things, you know, uh, began, right? He started the covenant and stuff. So Jesus, he starts teaching about the kingdom in between the cross and the church age, right? 40 days. And he's telling them all this stuff because he wants them to understand some things. But it's kind of weird because he begins the church instead of bringing in the kingdom. It's like, you just taught us for 40 days about the kingdom. And here you are changing subjects, come to find out. What do y'all think of that? Okay. Y'all y'all seem intimidated today. Um, <laughs> no, I, I or bored just, or you, in, no, uninterested. You said, we're just you we're said, letting Janet go first. Yeah, you said no, Janet had to go I first. Said, and then <laughs> Dane and then me. So I was just waiting for Janet. So I was just like, okay, Janet, go. In oh, general. I, I said oh. in general. Okay, oh. okay. Okay, okay. Guys, guys, I'm sorry. I really attempt to answer, but I'm waiting for other to go first because this is not a question. All right, okay. Because Charlie said earlier that a question I want, uh, she, he want me to mm -hmm. answer first. A question. Oh yeah, that, I failed at that, was... that too. <laughs> so, I, I think we're we're joking because wasn't... we don't have a good answer. <laughs> okay. Well, Did let's just walk. Question? Let's just walk through this stuff. All right. Maybe I'll save that question for another time. All right. So Chafer is suggesting that the period would be most like the Mosaic Law mm -hmm. because it will include a revival of principles of that. Now, of course, we respect Chafer, right? I mean, he founded DTS. But what is his problem with his reasoning that, that y'all think of that say, well, it's not a, it's not going back to the law? Well, he says he uses the word akin, meaning that it's the like. It doesn't say that it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he, it's it's not a. I don't think there's anything wrong with what he said because he's not saying it is the Mosaic Law. He said it is similar to. It's a you know it's a it's a right. Is that the right word? Um, uh, of the law, right? Right. And see, this is Ryrie summarizing this, but I went back and I hunt down the footnote, and the footnote is from mm -hmm. Major Bible Themes. But this is the thing. See this one right here? This is the 1926 version. The mm -hmm. one that Ryrie's quoting is a 1942 version. Well, I didn't even know a 1942 version exists and I haven't been able to find it yet. However, we do have this one, right? And it's kind of interesting when you're comparing what Chafer said and then what Walvern said once he got his hands on things, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's things that I probably have attributed to Chafer that were actually, you know, more of Walvoord's influence. And of course, we could read mm -hmm. Chafer's Systematic Theology to get a better understanding of that. But uh, just be aware that you may come across those differences like that. So look what, look what, this is from Major Bible Themes. What's he called the dispensation? Grace, right? Yeah. And then he jumps to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So you see, he's not saying, he's not viewing the tribulation as a dispensation. Right. All right. Now, Janet, be our designated reader. The dispensation of the kingdom begins with the second coming of Christ and is preceded by a period of time, including the tribulation, which, so, which to some extent is a transitional period. So here he's saying it, it to some extent is transitional, okay? Um, and he's saying it's before the kingdom, which is true. Go ahead, Janet. When you said transitional, you know, I, I, I know that I questioned uh, this to you, Charlie, before. But when, when you said transitional period, everything is transitional. Okay. So it would be have a two dispensation, Old Testament and New Testament, or heavenly uh, or the before the before creation and end with the 
know, and and that's for you in our state. And that's for y'all to think about because what we're doing is we're talking a little bit about this, how many dispensations there are. Um, but uh, did y'all watch the video from last time where Janet and I went through nine dispensations and 12 just listed those options? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's other options, all right? But we're building from Rari and, and going up from there to more recent as we're dealing with that. All right? Does anybody want to say anything about this quote before we go to the next one? Me, no. On the translation, I, I was confused. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Janet. At the, at the removal of the church, when the Lord comes again to receive his own, the law, the law age will be resumed. What's that sound like, Josh? Why? <laughs> <laughs> It sounds Why? like he's talking on both sides of his mouth. Yeah. But that's that's what Dane said earlier. That seems like the law of Moses, isn't that it? Yeah, the law age will be resumed and continue for the period known as Daniel's 70th week, which week is generally conceded to be seven years. So his reasoning seems to be like this. I mean, we're we're only taking a snapshot from major Bible themes. His mm -hmm. reasoning seems to be that because the Daniel 70 week was revealed underneath the Mosaic law and those 70 weeks pertain to Israel, then the final seven must pertain to Israel and must therefore be a continuation of the law. But exactly. Ryrie's going to later on and say this. He's going to say the law existed a thousand years before uh, the uh, 70 week prophecy ever came into being. So, so the whether the 70 week prophecy is in place doesn't determine the new dispensations in place. Go ahead, Janet. No, Janet. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just thinking about if there is no continuation. So, uh, uh, there's no, there's no ended before the grace then of the law. If there is no, if there is continuation, then the law is not ended then. At and the see, grace. this relates to uh, some of the terms that were used for the church. Uh, parentheses, intercalation, which is like a period of a time that's inserted like into a calendar or whatever. So it's like God has a plan for Israel, but then here comes the church and he paused it, you know, he paused Israel. Mm -hmm. Now he's playing the plan for the church. And then once the church is removed in his mind, he's like, well, the, it, God's plan for Israel resumes. Now, I agree God's plan for Israel has been temporarily postponed as we're relating to the theocracy, as we're relating to the nation uh, of Israel. But that doesn't mean a new dispensation begins. Right. Y'all agree with that? I would agree. Okay. Janet? Yeah. I have something in my thoughts, but... Well, share oh. your thoughts. And not sh not sure, but maybe later or when okay. uh, next time we have Bible study. Okay. All right, go ahead, Janet. In determining that in determining the dispensation to which the tribulation period belongs, it should be observed that it bears no relation to the features of this church age, nor as it the characteristic of a dispensation in itself. Mm -hmm. Though it is the consummation of divine judgment upon all men and their institutions. What's this? Wait. Um, it is especially Israelite. Is. Israelitish, yeah. So he's saying what's going on in the tribulation has no similarity to what's going on in the church age. And he's, he's asserting that there's no characteristics that, uh, the, that the law has a similar, similar with other dispensations, okay? And that's sort of what Josh was saying about there's no progressive revelation, um, all right? Go ahead, Janet. The continuity of the Jewish age which be began in Sinai is incomplete apart from the events which belongs to the great tribulation as stated by daniel the 70th week is required 
for the finishing of Israel's transgression and the bringing in of everlasting righteousness. Okay, so he's he's going on to this idea of continuity. And yeah, there is continuity, but but the continu everything's put on pause while the church is in existence on earth. So um all right. Go ahead, Janet. The transgression to be finished could be no part of this age of grace, but is rather of the preceding age. The fact that the general features which obtain in the tribulation are similar to those principles which were peculiar to the law age is also conclusive. So he's still trying to argue that it's most similar to the law. Um, all right, go ahead. The Sabbath, the Sabbath is reestablished. In so this is his point. Well, the Sabbath is coming back. It must be similar to the law. But it's end also, right? But in the tribulation, Jesus says, pray that your travel will not be in the Sabbath or, or the winter, I think. So Jesus seems to be saying that the, the Sabbath will come back in the tribulation. Okay. That's one option. Temple worship is going to be restored in the tribulation, right? But look how look what he says right here, though in unbelief. Yeah, because he's talking about the Antichrist. Because who's the one that actually brings yeah. back the law in the tribulation? The Antichrist. Yeah, the Antichrist and the false prophet. It's not God doing it. Now God's mm -hmm. allowing it to happen as, as part of the judgment. Um, so the old testament kingdom hope will again be announced. Okay. But it's not a mm -hmm. it's not an offer, it's say hey, we're we're coming. Whether you like it or not, ready or not, here I come. <laughs> but uh, anyway, mm -hmm. and the legal principle of merit and reward for endurance will again obtain throughout this brief period. That's that passage: "He that endures to the end shall be saved." And so he tries. He he seems to maybe making it say that it's only during those sorts of periods that this idea of merit and reward for endurance is offered. And of course, I think most of us would say that spiritual endurance is still rewarded you know uh mm -hmm. in the church age that's a whole nother issue okay go ahead janet not only does the law dispensation require the yet future tribulation period for the execution of those divine judgments which belong to it but by the recognition of the sequence connect Connecting the, these two periods of time, the continuity of purpose is preserved within the messianic. Earthly kingdom which follows the tribulation is seen to be both the legitimate expectation and the logical consumption of the dispensation of the law. So um, are y'all getting where he's coming from at least? No, Josh, you're shaking your head. No, is the writing confusing? I'm a heck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he sometimes he's got some long sentences, but um, yeah. basically what he's he's going back and he's saying the same thing. There's this continuity that all this relates to Israel. When the church is removed, things go back to Israel. It's pretty much what he's saying. All right. But do you think? Uh, question for you. Sir. Okay, but, go ahead. But after the rapture, there uh, people in the tribulation is not just the Jews. There's the Gentiles. Right, and and but right now no. in the church age, there are Gentiles mainly, and then Israel. Mm -hmm. So the so the people within the dispensation is not what determines the dispensation. No, because I was thinking about the transition anyway. There's ethnic distinctions and there's dispensational distinctions. They're not the same thing. First Corinthians 10 32 says, do, do good. I think it says uh, to the Jew, the Gentile, and the, and the church of God or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you see those distinctions there, but there's other distinctions in addition to that. Otherwise, you would just say, okay, every passage is by Israel, is just about Israel. We'll just keep it at that. And then every passage about Gentiles is about Gentiles, and we'll keep it at that. And then the church is both. 
those help you start getting that idea, but you start recognizing, okay, there's other things involved, including covenants that, that may sometimes make distinctions. But go ahead and read, Janet. By so, by so much, it may be observed that the present unforeseen dispensation of grace is wholly parenthetical within the yeah. dispensation of the law. Yeah. So when you read a parentheses, yeah, you, did, you, did. you have your subject here and then you have your object here or the rest of the sentence and the parentheses is just additional information. But if you take away the parentheses, the sentence will make sense by itself. Like if I say, I love Janet, right? I love Janet. I say, I love, uh, I could say, how would I say this, Josh? I, uh, Charlie, who lives in Texas, in parentheses, loves Janet. So yeah. if I remove the information about me, the sentence still makes sense. There's the continuity right. thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Charles, yes. he's... He's then not saying that it's a resumption of the law, but it's the dealing with the punishment for the age of the law, those failures. In a way, I mean, he's wrestling with this. You can mm -hmm. clearly see mm -hmm. that he's wrestling with this, and he probably made some of this more clear in uh, his systematic theology. But it's just right. interesting that Ryrie quoted from a 1946 version, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't have that one. So if y'all come across yeah. them, don't say, oh, that's an old book by Chafer. You know, mm -hmm. I got the new one. No, get one of the old ones too, because mm -hmm. sometimes it's good to trace the development of thought, you know, before other yeah. editors or contributors get their hands on things. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, Janet. Israel's judgment began with her disp uh, dispersion, mm -hmm. were continued in the destruction of Jerusalem and her final scattering among the Gentiles and will end with that hour of her greatest afflictions in the coming tribulation. The greatest of her sins is the rejection of her Messiah at the first advent of Christ. Now, if I remember right, he says all this underneath the section in the dispensations underneath the law. Okay? Because mm -hmm. he's talking about the failure and stuff. All right? All right, so this is when Ryrie's coming back in, okay? All that was Schaefer, because I try to do my best to get these quotes in context. Um, so go ahead, Janet. For instance, the Sabbath day will apparently be observed strictly during the period. Furthermore, it will be a time when God will deal especially with Israel again. It is the seventh death week of Daniel, and since the first 69 weeks were part of the economy of the law it will be also so he's just summarizing chafer's uh argument right mm -hmm. and here's the objection go ahead janet the principal objection to this view is simply that no other dispensation comes back into effect again once it has ended oh, yeah, yeah. And there is no question that the Mosaic law ended with the first advent. Huh? And there is no question that the Mosaic law ended with the first advent of Christ. It would be a very unusual thing to, re, to reinstate a dispensation after a lapse of 2,000 years or more. Of course, God could do that. But it seems highly doubtful. Yeah, so I don't think you're going to come across hardly anybody that's going to say that the dispensation is the law. I mean, that the tribulation is the law. Um, the, you, you never know, though. Um, but it's it's okay to ask. It can, It's okay to think about similarities and differences. All right, so going back to this yes. question, is yes. the tribulation a dispensation? Janet's still saying yes. All right. Yeah, we we we. I think everybody nice. agrees here that it's not the Mosaic Law, right? It's not part of the yeah. Mosaic Law. Okay? Yes. Yeah. All right. So this book right here is by William Evans, uh, Outline Study of the Bible. I don't have it, but it's what Ryrie quotes, and he mm -hmm. talks about uh, the tribulation being a dispensation. Um, so 
Also, Clarence Mason talks about that as well. And you can go to this ancient pastor's net and you can find that because what Ryrie did in his, in his uh, book is he wrote Clarence Mason notes, Philadelphia Bible College, mimeograph notes. You know, mm -hmm. it's like his class notes or whatever. So um, it, you could go there and you could look at that if you want. All right. Go ahead, Janet, read. Okay. There are many characteristics to commend such a view. The tribulation is a time of wrath. It distinctly deals with Israel again, assuming that the rapture is before the tribulation. I said assuming the true church is absent from the earth and the gospel to be preached during that period is the gospel of the kingdom. These features seem to characterize a different dispensation. So Rari's saying, Janet sounds like she's making some sense, okay? Mm -hmm. if, if we look at this information. Does anybody want to comment on this before we see what Rari says about it? He's saying there's a time of wrath, dealing with Israel again, and the gospel of the kingdom is being offered. Or we need a better word than offered because um, it's being announced that the kingdom's mm -hmm. coming. Okay? Right. Yeah, announcement is different than being offered. All right. Thank you for announcing that. Or, I like offer, that. I, or I like offering your <laughs> viewpoint. See the difference? Yeah. <laughs> so it depends on the context. Um, okay, go ahead, Janet. But these are not the only considerations. To be sure, the Sabbath will be observed during that time. But by whom? By those Jewish people who find themselves in their land again and who set up their ancient worship once more. Okay. They do the they do this not they do what they do this not because they are obeying the responsibilities of a tribulation economy, which includes worship on Sabbath as the requirement. After all, many Jews today, both in and out of Palestine, Palestine, observe the Sabbath, but that doesn't but that does not mean that we are no longer under the dispensation of grace. Y'all get Rari's point there? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it, just because you're doing it doesn't mean you're approved to do it, you know? Uh, like when Tony taught about uh, conscience, you know, you couldn't eat animals, at least from what we see from the text, but that doesn't mean people didn't do it, you know? Most likely they did. I mean, they probably were eating each other um, at some point you know, before the flood, but, um, okay. Go ahead, Janet. God has not ordained this obs observance for today, nor will he in the tribulation period. Therefore, its observance does not indicate a dispensational change. Right. Go ahead. To be sure, it will be a period of the outpouring of the wrath of God, but it will also be a time of much salvation. Many Jews and multitude of Gentiles will come to know the Lord. Okay. Yeah. So it will be at so it will be a time during which grace will not be absent, but rather manifested present, manifest manifestly present. Even if one makes a distinction between the gospel of the cross and the gospel of the kingdom. That does not mean that the gospel of the kingdom will not include the message of the cross. Y'all hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds it, like something I think of. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jenny. It will add the aspect of good news that announces the coming kingdom along with the message of the cross. Also, the gospel of the kingdom was preached by the Lord during his earthly ministry while the dispensation of the law was still operative. So he's like, just because the kingdom is being announced, I was about to say offered, <laughs> um, doesn't mean it's a new dispensation because when the kingdom was offered, it was still underneath the law, you know? Absolutely. All right, 
Go ahead, Janet. <clears throat> Thus, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom was not then, nor will it be later, a distinctive enough feature to mark off a new dispensation. Okay. Go ahead, Janet. The same is true of the argument of, of the argument based on the seventy weeks. They are not in themselves determ determinative of a dispensational change. After all, they began about a thousand years after the law was given to Israel without inaugurating a new dispensation. And even though God turns his attention to Israel again during the tribulation, he does not do this to the exclusion of others. Right. So, <coughs> Janet, yeah. what, is what, the tribulation a dispensation, Janet? Yes or no? Is the, tribu well, <coughs> is is the, the tribulation a dispensation, yes or no? Uh, yes, based on uh, I, she's still yes. saying yes yes and why, why uh, see why i'll never win an argument with her <laughs> why why there's underlying of my question before a dispensation in itself because that's we're on the third one now it's going to talk about it <laughs> okay i thought that okay. you agree with me so <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful there, man. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. you're good. All right. Go ahead, Janet. Therefore, it seems that the tribulation with each many judgments is from the dispensational viewpoint, the end of the economy of grace. So Ryrie is saying what Josh and Dane were saying. It's the yeah. end of grace. So Janet, remember, remember your argument. Your yeah, argument yeah. originally was the church is not here, so it must be a new dispensation. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. But yes. if the church is inside but, of grace, then go ahead, Janet. Nothing. Okay. Right. Okay. So this is a, a screenshot of the Kindle yeah. version of, of Dispensation Innocence. And I've done this for Dane mainly because he wanted to know where these elements that Tony uh, shared or taught came from. Mm -hmm. So you see right here, it says the dispensation began. That's the equivalent of element. Uh, human mm -hmm. responsibility, HR, human tests, one prohibition, human failure, you'll see it on the minute on the next page, divine ju justice and divine grace in brackets. So right here, the act of disobedience, divine mm -hmm. judgment, he actually uses the word divine judgment there. And he always says like the principle of grace. So that was essentially where that came from. Mm -hmm. Now this is Schofield and Schofield uses the word simple test. And mm -hmm. he mentions that the dispensation ends in judgment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a little bit of review, uh, but, but I just made this real quickly because my goal is to just talk about uh, how this relates to the dispensation of grace. All right, so the elements of a dispensation. I'm just saying that the event is the cross, the human responsibility. I just put something general, evangelize and disciple. Okay, the human test, I would say that's obeying God's word for the church. You know, the human failure. Typically, I think it's uh, major Bible themes. It uses the term major and minor failures, but that makes it sound like major or minor sins, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just mm -hmm. trying to experiment with this and saying micro failure is what happens in the dispensation and macro failure is what ends that dispensation. So the micro failure would be not applying God's word, right? We're all guilty of that. But the macro failure is apostasy and apathy, you know? Um, I was just trying to sum up everything there. <laughs> Divine judgment. Micro would be any failure, any judgments that God brings during this dispensation. Divine discipline. Macro is when that dispensation ends. And, and I have in parentheses the rapture and the tribulation. And divine grace would be, and just like Josh mentioned earlier, and I saw it from a meme, that when we're raptured, the Bible's not raptured. You know, it's still left here so that other people can believe. And it needs to be said too, the Holy Spirit is still here because he's omnipresent and he's still going to be working in the earth. 
So that's part of God's grace in that. Okay, Janet, read, please. From the perspective of the 70 weeks of Israel, it is their last week. But from the viewpoint of the true church, there is no relation since the church will be raptured before the tribulations be tribulation begins. Okay. All right. But from the dispensational viewpoint of God's running the affairs of the world, it seems more natural to consider the tribulation as the time when he is bringing to a conclusion the economy of grace with judgment on men who have rejected him and grace upon the many of who will accept him rather than to consider it a separated dispensation. Okay. The church will not be subject to the judgments, just as Noah was not judged by the flood in his day. But in both cases, the dispensation does not end until the judgment are completed. Okay, so he didn't say exactly what you said, Dane. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the process, maybe perhaps what that's sort of similar to is whenever Christ comes back, there's going to be so much carnage that there's going to be a cleanup time before the kingdom it, actually is established, if you will. Right, that's at 70 days or whatever. Yeah, um, I can't remember the exact amount. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think what he's saying is true too, is that, yeah, uh, uh, the church will not be subject to judgments just as Noah was not judged by the flood in the day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, nowhere is that indicating that the church is like Noah or whatever in that sense. It's just referring to mm -hmm. judgments there concerning dispensations, not typology. Mm -hmm. All right. Janet? Remember, these questions are minor in relation to the main tenets of dispensationalism. The fact that there are questions is not the fault, the fault of the system, but is due to lack of detailed revelation. And differing answers to these questions will not make or break the system. Okay, that's something to be mindful of, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. The, ma the matter of a unique dispensation given to Paul distinct from that which began at Pentecost will be discussed in the chapter and uh, an, uh, alter dispensationalism. Yeah, so we're not gonna deal with that right now, all right? And uh, I wanted to mention this, check this out. We had just advertised uh, Dr. McGowan's uh, dispensational series, right? And he started it back up last week. so. So in our previous video, we had mentioned it, and I messaged them and told them that. It's like, that's cool. But I, I just I, wanted to give that shot I, out. Go ahead, Janet. No, I have that. Uh, it's Biblical Dispensation. Club. I think I have that watch also, but not all yet. And, and that's, that, that's the video that is pops up on my notification. And then I try to check the, the, the notification, and it says there, that's 12 dispensation. I mean, I mean the title of the video, but it's not 12 dispensation, but the, you know, the, the level of dispensation that they are discussed, one, two, three, until 12. Okay. So, um, and then you can go to Sugarland Bible Church and get that series, you know, and start watching it. Okay. So that's all <laughs> of that part. Now to y'all guys, um, let me say this. We have no way stopped studying whether the tribulation is a dispensation or not. That will be something studied in the future, right? Hopefully not in, not, but, you know, if people are left behind and watching it, you know, that they won't have to study it. They'll be experiencing it, sadly. But um, some point in the future, not saying far future, whatever, we'll continue that. But, but the reason we're doing that is we're following the order in general of Rari's book, and he deals with how many dispensations are there and before he ever discusses what are the dispensations, okay? So Janet, what was your takeaway? What did you learn today? And Janet's still saying it's a dispensation, right? Yeah, I still. Okay. I'm sorry. It's all right. 
Um, I was, uh, uh, this is my thought, but I just want to share it, but it's not about questioning, but it's about sharing the thoughts that I was like, you know, when you draw a line going to, from the, from Christ and then going to the, you know, uh, the continuation of the law. And then if that is so the church, because you, because the, uh, like what Noah, it seems like the same. God take out first to save and then go judgment. Is that the same thing to the rapture that God is going to do wrath or to do judgment? Then he want the church to be saved first so that we were not suffer the tribulation. But uh, that's my thought that I want to figure out if the you know the 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 tribulation is dispensation itself. Okay. Can hey, connect, no. What about you? Yeah. I mean, you're still thinking about it. I'm not going to give it yeah. to you. You know. Yeah. I mean, there's there's other people that say it is a, a dispensation or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I I wanted you to figure out why you think that's so. You know. Yes. That's why I just want to share. But my understanding the elements of the dispensation, it would fit underneath the, the judgment phase of dispensation of grace. But of course, that assumes there is a dispensation of grace, you know. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay, Dane, what about you? I'm sticking with the judgment period for okay. another dispensation. All right. Any takeaways? Hmm. Not specifically pertaining to this, no. Okay. But I did take some notes from Schaefer and Ryrie. Oh, cool. Josh? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just agree with what Ryrie said that um, my mind has not been changed. I still feel like it, it is not a dispensation in and of itself. It is literally the culmination of whatever we're currently in. Whether you want to call this an age or a dispensation or not, you know, some, like you said, some look at it as like it's not a dispensation. It's just they pause one and start another. Um, it, but it's the end of something, not an end and, and something in and of itself. Um, okay. So, you know, I'm glad that uh, Ryrie took Schaefer's stuff and revised it. And uh, Walvard, Walvard, uh, Rari, Rari just straight up corrected it. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, I, I mean, we stand on the shoulder of giants, so we can't be too tough on Schaefer and Walvard and, and everybody. No, of course not. We would be nothing without them, you know, because God right. used them. Yeah, yeah. correct. But, uh, um, but we can refine, and then somebody behind us can make, you know refine it even better or and just like you said a little bit ago um there is no further refinement because we're not here yeah well see janet gave me an age not a dispensation uh because she gave me a period of time that this video must last an hour and i only have six minutes otherwise i mm -hmm. may shown y'all uh one of the variation of the views about the dispensation being a tribulation that's okay because i didn't plan that i just wanted you know a transition there mm -hmm. and get it a just transition anyway um <laughs> y'all have any questions or comments before we go uh i guess I, I have one quick question okay and it might be a little redundant but i'm still not seeing a clear reason why this tribulation couldn't be a period of judgment for the Mosaic law, even though the Mosaic law itself has ended? It's a good question because yeah. if you think about it, the 70 AD, right? Mm -hmm. was a judgment on Israel. But it was during the church age. Right, it, but it was during the church age. Mm -hmm. Also, the temp, and what that means is that they were offering sacrifices up until mm -hmm. that time. Yeah. What do you say to that, Josh? Again, just, you know, just because man's got it wrong doesn't mean that god hasn't ended something or started something new 
um, you know, we, we shouldn't base what other people, you know, our thoughts and stuff on the actions of other humans' words, whether they're Gentile or Jew, but rather on the word of God. So what did God say? God made it very clear that, you know, from Peter in Acts chapter 2, like 40 years before that period, you know, hey, you know, like him and Paul, you know, Peter to the Jew, Jews, Paul to the Gentiles, we're starting something different here. Uh, just because the Jews didn't get on board as a whole, right? Not every Jew did. Some Jews did, obviously, you know, like 4,000 people, 5,000 people got saved. But there's no Gentiles there, right? In Acts, Acts, in Acts chapter no. 2, not really. Uh, there may have been, a, you know, a very limited, tiny few, but it was mainly, I mean, largely Jewish. Um, Jan has been making again, videos on Acts 2. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, I, I, I mean, there's no indication that there is G Gentiles anywhere, and you know, it was it was mainly started something Jewish uh, and turned into Gentiles over time. But again, I wouldn't base my decision on what other people do, but on what the Word of God directs us to do. So, um, so yeah. Um, does that answer your question? Do you do you remember if uh, um? RB theme takes the tribulation as a dispensation. I don't think he does. You don't? I can't remember. What, I, I know he takes the hypostatic union as as a dispensation. I, I just wondered. Gotcha. All right. And yeah, you had a question like who's RB theme? No, I know, I know. And, and oh, I'm just I'm just knows. wondering why why uh, uh, RV team is like on my side. This <laughs> 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 is like, come on, I need somebody over here. She's <laughs> she's confident, here. right? When Daniel <laughs> Daniel Goffrey, I can't say his name right. Um, he's on Janet's side, and so is mm -hmm. Christopher Cohn. I mean, they both believe that the tribulation or dispensation, and those are recent articulations of it and we'll we'll study that in the future um but i want rari i want us to build from rari you know um that's the mm -hmm. goal all right okay. well janet you want to tell the audience what they can do and all that yeah yeah sure um hi guys uh, thank you so much for uh being with us today and i hope this video uh blesses you and if you think that it's so, uh, will you please uh, share this video so that others will be blessed also and keep this ministry in prayer. And uh, follow, <laughs> follow our page, The Layman Seminary Online, um, The Lewis Layman Online International Seminary, and also my page, Bible and Janet on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, don't forget that one, right? <laughs> for, for, for Tagalog, right? Yeah, for Tagalog. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stop this video.